Hey crazies, from what we can tell, our universe started in an extremely hot, dense state. Then, for whatever reason, it began to expand and cool off. It'll do this forever. It'll do this until everything is so far apart and so cold that nothing will happen anymore. How could something that has an infinite future have a finite past? Maybe it was never finite after all. To be clear, this is not a mathematical problem or a measurement problem. It's a philosophical problem. When we look out into the universe and we account for all the matter and light within it, we find that there isn't enough for the future we want. Using the model of general relativity, we can map out several possible futures and pasts. Some expand and collapse in an endless cycle. Others cool off forever. We would like this cyclical universe to be the one we live in. It would give the universe new vitality on a regular basis. Active existence would persist forever. Unfortunately, th the data tells a different story. It says we live in this universe, the one that cools off forever, accelerating as it goes. One that ends in a cold, black void. Or does it? Entropy might have something to say about this. Entropy kind of measures the uniformness of the energy in the universe. The more uniform things are, the less that can happen. All hail the gradient! The only reason anything ever happens is because of a gradient, a difference from one place to another. There are fluid pressure gradients, electromagnetic gradients, time flow gradients, and even probability gradients. They all result in something happening. It would be nice if something could happen forever, but there's one thing standing in the way. The second law of thermodynamics. It's the law that ruins every physics party. It says that entropy in a closed system tends to increase over time. Since entropy is just a measure of uniformness, we can say that uniformness tends to increase over time. And since uniformness is the exact opposite of a gradient, we can say that gradients tend to go away over time which is why we say the universe will end in a cold black void where nothing happens anymore. But thermodynamics is based on statistics. There are no guarantees, only trends. The second law doesn't say uniformness must increase, only that it tends to increase. So you're saying there's a chance it could decrease? Yes, but, but only a tiny itty bitty chance. Consider a room full of air molecules. We expect those molecules to be uniformly spread. It would be pretty weird if they just suddenly collected in one corner, right? That's because our intuitions are based on experience and we've never seen that happen. But statistically speaking, it's not impossible. Yes, it's, it's highly unlikely and it certainly wouldn't last long, but it's not impossible. In fact, how possible it is depends on how many molecules there are in the room. If there are only two molecules in the room, it wouldn't actually be that weird. Random motion could easily cause both of them to be in the corner, if only for a moment. It's just that most rooms don't have only two molecules. They have a crap ton. A typical room has on the order of 10 to the 28 molecules in it. That's 10,000 trillion trillion. This is the kind of scale our instincts are based on. That's what makes it so unlikely, but statistically, it's not impossible. And if you think about it, the universe is kind of like a giant room. A universe is a container with particles in it, particles that obey thermodynamics. If there's a chance all the particles in a room could end up hot and dense in one place, then it's possible the particles in a universe could too. There's a chance the entire universe could suddenly drop back into a low entropy state a state with lots of gradients, a state like it had at the Big Bang. It's just an extremely small chance, uh, so small that we don't expect it to happen in any reasonable amount of time. But what about an unreasonable amount of time? A monkey randomly typing on a keyboard wouldn't be expected to type anything coherent. Uh, unless, of course, they learned English, which isn't unheard of. They're smart little But say you give the monkey a lot more time like a year, or a million years, or a Google years, it still wouldn't be coherent text. Okay, okay, how about a Googleplex raised to the Googleplex raised to grams number years? How about then? 
That's a finite number, just a really big one. In that many years, our immortal monkey might type a coherent page. It has become remotely possible. With a large enough statistical sample, any normally unlikely event becomes likely. It's called the law of truly large numbers. If there are enough pages with randomly typed gibberish, we should expect to see sensible text on some of them. The Library of Babel has put this concept into action. In every room, on every shelf, in every book, on every page in this digital library, there is a string of 3200 characters. This library contains every possible permutation of 3,200 characters, chosen from a list of 29. Most of the pages look like complete garbage, but if you find just the right one, it might contain the sentence you're looking for, in the middle of more garbage, or all by itself on a page, or even on a completely sensible page. Type in any word or phrase less than 3,200 characters, and it'll tell you where to find it. It's in there somewhere, probably several places. The point is, if we have an insanely large amount of things or an insanely long amount of time, our intuition is broken. And the universe appears to have an infinite amount of time. Oh, 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 I infinity is the biggest number, right? Well, yes, but also no. It depends on what you mean by number. If you mean an idea we use to count, measure, or label the world around us, then it might be reasonable to call infinity a number. But if you talk to a mathematician, they're going to be stricter about this. Numbers obey certain rules. Take the number 5, for example. If you add another number, like 3, to it, then you get a third number, 8. Infinity doesn't work like that. If you take infinity and add 3, you'd expect to get a new number whatever infinity plus three is. But you don't. You just get infinity again. It doesn't obey the rules we expect numbers to obey, and, and when we talk about infinity being in the real world, this can lead to some weird conclusions. Given an infinite amount of time, our immortal monkey wouldn't just be likely to type a coherent page. It would be guaranteed. It would be guaranteed that they'd type all the works of Shakespeare. It would be guaranteed that they'd type all the books ever written in order. It's weird. Infinity isn't really a number though. It's a concept. It's the idea of endlessness. Say you've got the full list of counting numbers, also known as the natural numbers. Naturally. Our instincts tell us the last number in the list should be infinity, but it isn't. Infinity isn't in the list. It's just the idea that the list never ends. There's a famous thought experiment that might help us with this. It's called Hilbert's Hotel. Assume the counting numbers represent all the rooms in an infinite hotel. Now assume all those rooms are occupied by guests. If there are an infinite number of rooms, then there are an infinite number of guests. Late one night, another guest shows up and needs a room. Unfortunately, there aren't any rooms available, right? Wrong! There's a way to fit another guest in here. The hotel manager simply has to ask every guest to move up one room. This frees up room number one for the new guest. You can do this as many times as you want to accommodate as many guests as you need to. Even though Hilbert's hotel is always full, there's always room for new guests, which kind of breaks our brain. There's no such thing as an infinite hotel. I know, I know, th this is only possible because there is no last room. Th the future is infinite though, there is no last moment. When sets of things are infinite, they break our intuition. Space and time are no exception. You can think of space as an infinite set of points, and you can think of time as an infinite set of moments. Space is likely endless in all directions, but time only seems to be endless in one direction, the future. If we turn the clock back, there's a beginning to everything we know, the Big Bang. The universe has an infinite future, but a, a finite past, which, you know, seems a little weird. Can you fix it? Yes, maybe. The law of truly large numbers tells us that given a large enough statistical sample, any normally unlikely event becomes likely. Given an unreasonable amount of time, we should expect this monkey to type a coherent page. Given an unreasonable amount of time, we should expect all the molecules in this room to randomly collect in a corner, at least for a moment. 
The more particles you have though, the less likely that will be. For particles in a universe-sized room, we might insist there be more than just an unreasonable amount of time. Luckily, our universe is expanding forever into an infinite future. An infinite amount of time is a lot bigger than an unreasonable amount of time. Probabilities only have meaning in a finite time. If the future is infinite, then anything that can happen will happen, eventually. An immortal monkey randomly typing all the books ever written, molecules in a room collecting in a corner, and even a universe collapsing into a low entropy state with lots of gradients, causing another big bang. We just have to wait long enough for it to happen randomly. In an infinite space with an infinite future, Big Bangs happen randomly in finite clumps. Who knows if our Big Bang was the first? Who knows if there ever was a first? An infinite future guarantees an infinite past in an ever-expanding infinite space. Do you think Big Bangs can happen randomly in an infinite future? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for liking and sharing this video. A special thanks goes out to Patreon patrons Brian Weber and Bosphorus, and YouTube members Blank NA and Monkeys HQ for all their generous support. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to keep up with us. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy. Wait, wouldn't a random brain be more likely than a whole universe? Don't bring that up! The Earth isn't a perfect sphere, it's an oblate spheroid. All right, look. The difference between the widest and narrowest parts of the Earth is only 26 miles. The Earth is about 7,900 miles across. It's close enough. Anyway, thanks for watching.